The second case is a 25 year old, I think, lady, a young lady <coughs> with uh, a parotid swelling. Please don't forget that because you jumped on to Bell's palsy because that's what you're taught in medicine. Bell's palsy is a viral phenomenon, which is post viral palsy. That's not what mumps or associated diseases work, palsy. That's not what this case is. Classically, when you've been told there is a parotid swelling and subsequently there is there are features of facial nerve involvement, we'll suspect it to be malignant because this is a nerve lying next to the parotid gland. So if there is infiltration of facial nerve, the parotid will have these features. Now classically, the parotid region Now, if I can draw it for you, that's the mastoid, that's a zygomatic process, and that's the mandible, we draw a line, there are two horizontal lines, one goes across the zygomatic process, this is the zygomatic process, the other one goes across the mandible the angle of the mandible. Then one is drawn from from the the mastoid foramen for a mastoid process downwards, excuse me. And the other one is from the midpoint of zygomatic process. So you get this squarish thing. This is called parotid region. What is its significance? Any swelling lying in this region is taken as a parotid swelling unless proven otherwise. It can be a node. This is a ear. So that's why the lobule of the ear also gets lifted. Now, naturally, this patient is therefore a sus suspicious case of malignancy of parotid because the patient will give you a history of parotid swelling. <coughs> Following that, features of facial nerve involvement should examine for the swelling. Must see whether it's hard, fixed, with variegated consistency. That is, variegated means where all three consistencies exist. Variable is any two. Variegated is all three. That is, there is an element which is cystic, element which is firm, element which is hard. So there is an evolving cancer from firm to hard. And then there is a dissolving cancer which is necrosis with the cystic swelling. So, firm, hard and cystic, all three being present would make it a variegated swelling. Now what do you do to confirm the diagnosis? Same, always do the imaging. 40. And what do you do for the T in addition to ultrasound is your first image which is an extension of clinical examination. You can do an FNAC because there is suspicion of malignancy. And you get the imaging to show you also the status of the deep low. And the eco texture, which will let you know whether it's malignancy or not. And then the doubtful area, you can do an FNA. So you'll do USFNA, ultrasound guided FNA. What that will do is it will help you improve your yield of diagnosis because you will be hitting the solid areas, not the cystic areas. Solid, where you are expecting malignancy. And that's what would be the investigations to, to confirm US followed by USFNA. That is ultrasound guided FNA. If you read US books or if you go for US assembly, they might ask and they mention CT as the first diagnosis, first investigation, imaging. But remember, needless to say, imaging should usually be before, before needling. You don't want to distort. And what is the minimum biopsy for parotid swelling? Superficial parotidectomy. You know why? This is the minimum biopsy. Because if you cut through this parotid, you may form a parotid fistula. Or you may
cause seedling or you can cause injury to the facial nerve. So no true cut biopsy, core biopsies, incisional biopsies in parotid. Same applies to thyroid swelling. No core biopsies, no incisional biopsies, no, no, no cutting of the, the, the thyroid. Minimum biopsies, hemithyroidectomy there, superficial parotidectomy here. If you do that, you have a diagnosis. So whenever in doubt, that's what comes out. And what is superficial parotidectomy? If you stay superficial to the facio venous plane of patty, it's called superficial parotidectomy. That's, that's a minimum biopsy. You must understand that. In this case, since the facial nerve is involved, there is an element of infiltration. It's highly suspicious to be malignancy. And if it is malignancy, we will have to investigate further. That is, we need a contrast in a CT scan. Same thing for staging, right? To know the status of facial nerve. <coughs> Excuse me, to know the status of deep lobe. Some people talk about MRI for facial nerve. It's a soft tissue, but you're you're okay. You just mention I'll do a contrast in CT scan. Once you've done that, it is not superficial parotidectomy that you're going to treat. You're going to you're, you're going to do you're going to do radical parotidectomy. What is radical parotidectomy? It's done for cancer. Now, okay, I'll tell you what parotidectomy is. One, two, three. First one is superficial. where you remove superficial lobe, which is superficial to the plane of plat patty, which is facio venous plane. Yeah. The next parotidectomy is total conservative, not radical. Which means you remove both the lobes. But you preserve the facial nerve. Both lobes removed, but facial nerve is preserved. And in radical parotidectomy, both lobes plus facial nerve plus and block lymph node dissection. So superficial parotidectomy <coughs> is the type where we remove the lobe which is lying superficial to the fascia venous plane of patty. Total conservative parotidectomy is where we remove both the lobes, superficial as well as deep, but we preserve the facial nerve. And radical is where we remove both the lobes plus the facial nerve along with the draining lymph nodes. So you may have to do a neck dissection with it. Now here the facial nerve is involved. So there is no way you can preserve it. And remember a mono, a one liner that I, all te I teach all students. Functioning facial nerve should never be sacrificed. So that's the second case. Incidentally, we did total conservative parotidectomy and it came out to be a facial nerve schwannoma, which is extremely rare. That's why, although the gland is very small, the facial nerve was involved. So it was kind of an operative and clinical enigma. But I've given you the background. You should discuss it as any patient Presenting with a swelling in the parotid region is a case of parotid swelling unless proven otherwise. It can be just a lymph node also, pre lymph node. That's the first thing I want to teach you. The boundaries of parotid region are superiorly it is zygomatic process, then draw a vertical line from the midpoint of zygomatic process, from the mastoid process, and another horizontal line at the level of angle of mandible. That square is called parotid region. So any swelling there is a parotid swelling unless proven otherwise. 
Now, if there is a parotid swelling with facial nerve involvement or already happening, the swelling came first and the nerve got involved later. It is taken as a malignant swelling unless proven otherwise. The treatment for a malignant swelling is once you have confirmed the diagnosis and you have staged the disease, is wide local excision. That is to total radical parotidectomy, which you understood as to what it is. The superficial parotidectomy is when we just remove the superficial lobe, which is lying superficial to the facial venous plane of patty. Then total conservative parotidectomy is when we remove both the superficial and deep lobe, but we preserve the facial nerve. Radical parotidectomy is where we remove the superficial lobe, deep lobe, along with facial nerve and also the lymph nodes that are draining and block removal. So that's about both the cases. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed getting it to you. Thank you very much.